Hey, we're going to go over the doodle example that uh, I intended to go over on, on Thursday in lecture. So I'm going to walk you through the whole thing, just as I would have done in lecture. And, and this way, you guys will get to see an end-to-end -end system with a custom view in Android. So the first thing we'll do is we'll start a new project, okay? And call it anything you want. In this case, I'll call it CMSC 434 doodle example, okay? And this is fine. We can use the defaults just like we've gone over in class. Remember, these uh, the convention is to call that main activity. The XML is automatically renamed. The declarative XML file. And here we go. Now, just like I like to do in class, I'm going to close this old one. Just like I like to do in class. Let me just resize this a bit. The first thing is compile and <clears throat> so go into Java, main activity, right click and hit debug. I already have the emula emulator open as you can see. In this case it's a Galaxy Nexus so it'll choose the running device. And there we go, hello world. Right. So now I'm going to stop this, and let's start to build our custom view. Um, the first thing we'll do is to create the class. Um, we're going to do this a little bit differently than what I was showing you in, in class on Thursday. Um, you can look at my slides to see how you would do it through the UI component custom view. That's going to generate a lot of template code that just gets confusing, I've decided. So let's just simplify things, and we'll just create our own view class. In this case, let's call it doodle view. Okay, and that's going to extend a view class, an Android view class. <clears throat> now we need to make some constructors. Um, in this case, let's just make one. Here we go. This doodle view. Now we have a view, and let's add it to um, our activity. The width. In this case, we're going to say um, match parent, which is going to mean it's it's going to fill. Okay, and as you notice, it's going to overwrite this text view. It goes on top of the text view. We don't need that anymore, so we'll take that away. Okay, now we have a problem though. The following class could not be found, so we'll try to build the project. And it's also warning us, it says the custom view doodle view is not using the two or three argument view constructors. And that's important, actually. Um, you'll see this in my slides. If you want to use XML to stylize uh, your view, then you're going to have to add in some other constructors. And that, that's what it's warning us about. So we'll go ahead and do that. And those constructors include... Here and again, um, we're going to call this init function because we have overloaded the constructors objects. We want to call have all three constructors call the same initial initialization code. So in this case, we'll um, we'll write that here. This is real simple, very standard. There's nothing specific about Android here. This is just because we have these overloaded constructors, we're going to have one initialization function. Okay, so now let's go back to the activity and see if it's happy. We can rebuild the project. We'll, we'll see if this goes away. Ah, and it did. Great. Uh, so there, we've, we've done our view. Um, the first thing we need to do is, just like you saw in class, we've got to create a paint object. So in this case, we'll call it paint doodle. And remember, I like to prefix my member variables with an underscore. Other people will use an M. Some people don't even use the convention of, of prefixing their member variables, but I think it makes the code more readable. Um, you can see it knows that this class um, doesn't have a, an import yet. So you can hit Alt Enter on a PC or um, Alt Enter also on a Mac, and we'll import that class. OK, so now we have a paintbrush. Let's set up that paintbrush a bit, okay? Well, the first thing we want to do is set the color. 
I don't know. Uh, in class, we used red. So we can do that again. OK. And well, we've got to write our drawing code. So all views have a method called on draw and takes in a canvas object. And this is where all the fun stuff happens. OK, so I want to make sure we call our super class on the on the view. <clears throat> and here's where we can do all of our drawing. So just like we did in class, I will just draw something stupid and silly just to start out, just to show you kind of how it works. We'll do a draw line. We'll go from 0, 0 to the entire width of a width and height of the window. So this would just be a diagonal line. All right. And then the last thing that it takes in is a paint object. <clears throat> if you want to actually see what this looks like, you know, just like you would in your 131, 132 class, you're going to consult the, the API. Um, but you can also, with Android Studio, hit Control-P, and it'll tell you what the, uh, what the, the, phone, the method uh, signature looks like. So in this case, if you, if you can see that, it's asking for a paint. Well, we made a paint object already called Paint Doodle. But let me just open up Chrome, too, because um, so we know we're dealing with a canvas object, so I like to search for canvas Android. Now let's just see what comes up. Aha, here it is. And you can see I visited this before, and we can look at the draw line function. There it is. It takes uh, uh, x1, x2 position, and x2, uh, y2 position, so it's just going to draw the line from those two points with the paintbrush that you provide. Okay. All right. So I think that's sufficient. Now we can we can try to run this code and see what happens. See if I made any mistakes. Ah, here it is. Now you can see it's a little bit jagged, right? Um, so to deal with that, to make it a lot cleaner, we're going to actually turn on anti-aliasing. So we'll stop the program. We'll do paint doodle set any alias to true. So with the any alias true, let's let's run it again just to see if that actually improves the draw line and removes those sort of jaggies. Much smoother, right? Okay. So now let's move on to the more fun part, which is tracing the finger and allowing someone to doodle quickly. So the first thing we're going to do is create a path object. Oops, path, path, equals path. Uh, well, what is path? Let's look it up real quick in, um, in Android. The path class encapsulates compound multiple contour geometric paths consisting of straight line segments, quadratic curves, and cubic curves. That sounds perfect for our drawing app. So that's the path is basically going to uh, capture an array of points for us and, and draw those to the screen. So that's great. So we have that. Then we need to have code that senses where the user's touch is. And uh, again, the view class has um, uh, a parent method on this that we want to override. It's actually Boolean, and it's called on touch event. Okay, and this gives you a motion event. So the first thing we want to do with that is grab out the uh, x and y positions of the finger. Perfect. Now there's lots of different kinds of motion events, and there's three of particular interest to us. So let's do um, a, a, a switch statement on there, so that we can look at the ones that we want. Motion event dot get action, and we want the touch down event and the touch move event. Um, and for now, actually. We're not really going to deal with the touch up event, but that, that will be of use to us later. So, so maybe we could write code for that anyways. So case motion event 
dot um, down. Perfect. Let's just do a break. We'll write some empty, some skeleton code kind of. The move break. And this is the up. Now, if you've dealt with HTML and JavaScript programming, you'll know that these are pretty common. Or, or even maybe in your prior Java classes when you're doing um, on click listeners and you were looking at mouse movements. Okay, very similar stuff. Okay, so remember we have this path object up here. So we're going to use that now. So on down, that means we want to move the location of the brush, the paintbrush basically, to that location. Okay, and when they move, we want to actually paint. So let's do that too. Uh, line to touch x, touch y. Now, notice that this method returns a boolean. Well, as it turns out, or you know, ordinarily you might do something like this on touch event, motion event. So you would call the parent class. But let's look up this method signer and see what the contract says in the API. So let's go to view Android again. Here we are. And let's look up that on touch event, on touch event method. Here we go, on touch event. So there's there's different kinds of event processing, but we're going to be dealing with on touch event. On touch event implements this method to handle touch screen motion events. Perfect, perfect, perfect. Notice returns true if the event was handled, false otherwise. So we're going to change this then to return true since we're handling the events. And the other thing we want to do is call and validate. We have uh, this new path information that we want to draw to the screen, so we have to call and validate to add that draw event to the UI message queue. All right, so let's run this. Okay. Wow, okay, so it's just like what we basically got to in class. Now, I forgot to do one thing, which is I forgot to change my brush style to stroke rather than fill, so let's do that even though this is kind of a cool way to doodle. But let's just change our paint object to um, set style here, style dot. We just want to have it stroke, OK? And let's run the code. There we are. Hello, C M S C four thirty four. This is our little doodle app. Little flower here. There we go. So as you can see, with just a small amount of code, we actually can write some really interesting views. Um, really, if you were going to do this, uh, you would optimize it, okay? Because every invalidate call, we're drawing the entire path from the very first point we added to the end, rather than just the new path information. So uh, a more advanced version of this would actually be drawing to a bitmap off the screen, and then um, blitting that, it's called bit blitting, to the screen for the old content, and then you would draw the new path content on top of that. 